Greetings, fellow painters. Welcome back. I'm Tom, and I'm still your host of this painting journey. Today, we're painting justice. Uh, we're in the heart of Liverpool, Music City, Beatlemania, home of Ozzy, home of the Beatles. A uh, city so steep in music history, it's unbelievable. Uh, we had a few pints at the Cavern Club where the Beatles played over 200 performances. Experience was one of those treasures that never thought I'd get to experience. If you're a music fan, Beatles fan, rock and roll fan, making the pilgrimage to all of these epic locations of where they came from is, is a must. And so we headed over to the Cavern Quarter in the city center of Liverpool. I highly recommend it. I got to go to a couple of museums, ate at a few of the restaurants, saw the sights. City's alive, and quite lively. Streets are easy to manage, planned accordingly to a flow, very well organized. Parking is unexpectedly expensive, a little more than normal. So prepare yourself accordingly. So, in Liverpool, in front of the World Museum, and behind the St. George Hall, in St. James Park, on the east side of the William Gladstone statue, is a copper statue of justice. It's very striking. And she's not in her normal pose that you may be familiar with. Not at all. She's here. She's taking a rest. She's still in her helmet and armor, sword laying across her lap as she's sitting. Face is vigilant as befitting a warrior angel, but she's sitting. And I found it peculiar. This is also my first painting of the series that I'm intentionally setting up in portrait instead of landscape. More for the subject to fill the painting space and less focused on the surroundings. It's a park and I'd rather spend the time focusing on getting the patina colors, the copper, with a very vibrant sun shining on them. I'd rather focus on that than the trees and the stone wall the surrounding buildings. It's, it was it was more the artifact. More about the city. The city is cobblestones. Many of the roadways as well as walkways. These cobblestones were a huge thing in the development of the city, early England, and they haven't been upgraded since they've been set in. When a cobblestone cracks or goes bad, I guess you just pick it up, replace it, put a new one in. Where if it's a patch of concrete that goes bad, you can get a pothole. And even if it gets repaired and filled in, it still isn't smooth. There's still going to be another bump. It's just not, not a heavy, hard bump. It's just still a, a light, smaller bump. And <clears throat> I mean, you, you fill it in with new concrete, and it's just not filled with sand and trash. It is an ongoing battle for road maintenance. The, the more roads we have around everywhere, the more you've got to maintain them, the more they're going to fall into disrepair, misuse, everything. So it, it's the, the road repair crews got their work cut out of them. I mean, it's a guaranteed job for life. Another striking feature of the city is most of the buildings in the city center were at least six stories tall. It's very prominent, very oppressive. And it's not like the New York buildings where there's alleys in between. There's like a space in between a lot of the buildings. A lot of these buildings have that row building texture. So it's like just this giant stone edifice all the way across. As I said, it's very oppressive. It, it does keep the wind from the Mercy River and the Irish Seaway. The seagulls were seen to navigate through the city by flying through the streets as if it was a second layer of aerial traffic. It was interesting to watch as there's flows of birds and flocks of birds too. In the same area, they flew around doing bird things, looking for food, mating, all the things that birds do. And it was just, it was peculiar. Because they, they knew where they were going. And you could see them just navigate through, you know, 20, 30 feet above the ground, just going 
in between the buildings to their destinations. It was, it was, it was wild, as wild animals are. All right, now for the cone of the episode. In the early days of the Meiji era, there lived a well-known wrestler named Onami, Great Waves. Onami was immensely strong and knew the art of wrestling. In his public bouts, he defeated, no, I'm sorry, in his private bouts, he defeated even his teacher. But in public, he was so bashful that his own pupils threw him. Onami felt he should go to a Zen master for help. Hakuju, the wandering teacher, was stopping in a little temple nearby, so Onami went to see him and told him of his trouble. Great waves is your name, the teacher advised. So stay in this temple tonight. Imagine that you are those billows. You're no longer a wrestler who is afraid. You are those huge waves sweeping everything before them, swallowing all in your path. Do this. You'll be the greatest wrestler in the land. The teacher retired. Onami sat in meditation, trying to imagine himself as waves. He thought of many different things. And gradually, he turned more and more to the feeling of the waves. As the night advanced, the waves became larger and larger. They swept away the flowers in their vases. Even the Buddha in the shrine was inundated. Before dawn, the temple was nothing but the ebb and flow of an immense sea. In the morning, the teacher found Onami meditating. A faint smile on his face patted the wrestler's shoulder. Now, nothing can disturb you, he said. You are those waves. You will sweep everything before you. The same day, Nami entered the wrestling contest and won. After that, no one in Japan was able to defeat him. The end. Thank you. Now, what does this mean to you? What does this mean for you? Can you identify as Onami? Are you going through a similar challenge in this phase of your life? Or do you find yourself seen more as Hakuju? Are you an enabler by chance, getting others to believe in themselves? Please let us know in the comments below. Please do so. Uh, these cons are only meant to inspire you to be better. I'm sure you all want to find out which baby step to take forward to make ourselves better in some way every day. Because even a baby step is still a step forward. And that really isn't a measure or a comparison to anything in the realm of being better except for yourself. That's all we can measure against. It's the only constant in your life is your own self. Everything else changes and you have a different element at a different age and a stage than you. So it's not fair to compare yourself to anything else or anyone else. They're a different place. They don't have the same parameters. Some may be better, some may be worse, and you can't compare yourself to others. You have to only compare yourself to yourself and make the forward progression of making yourself better every day. And there you have it, justice. I hope I did it justice. I do hope you enjoyed. Tune in next time we go someplace new to paint. And we plan on bringing you along on our next adventure. So don't miss out. Smash that bell, turn on notifications. If you like this video and learn something, please do so. And uh, when you do so, you'll be alerted to all our upcoming content. Huge thank you to those that have already liked and subscribed so you keep up to date on my adventures. I hope you have a great day. Happy painting.